there guys, you're about to watch my Kickstarter preview for Pocket Landship. Uh, this is on Kickstarter right now, and we'll get to more on that in a minute. Uh, I just wanted to ask for some suggestions from you guys. This is a, a full solo playthrough that I've done for this. It's the first solo playthrough I've done for my channel, and uh, it's a lot tougher than it looks. So I just wanted to get some more suggestions from you guys. Um, if you can comment below for any uh, suggestions that I could change or do to the video to make it more interesting. Um, as I've filmed this a couple of times already and messed them up, you know, with my big head in the way or uh, the angle of the camera being, you know, wrong, that sort of thing. And of course, you know, to try and get enough information through while I'm playing it to keep it interesting. So if you have any suggestions, comment below. I would love to hear it. And if you want to see more solo playthroughs, I'm happy to do them. Uh, if that's something you guys want to see. So thanks a lot. And uh, let's get on to the video. Hey there, folks. Thanks for checking out our Kickstarter preview for Pocket Landship. This is from Wordforge Games, and it's on Kickstarter. It's a remaking of an older game that used to be a solitaire-only game uh, where you are a, a landship, like a tank, in World War One, and uh, you're fighting off against the Axis powers. Uh, it's changed slightly for this um, new iteration, which is now set in a more steampunk world, as you can see. You've got a big spider crawler, war tank over there, some big mechanized infantry guys. Um, but it also comes with a co-op variant uh, where you can play two-player, um, similar sort of game, which I'll go over at the end of the video. But I'm going to give you a solo playthrough so you can see what it's like. And uh, if you like it, you can follow the link, which will be in the description below. And uh, that will take you to the Kickstarter and you can go check it out. Keep in mind, as the box says, this is a demo set. So everything is placeholder artwork, placeholder components. It's just enough so that I can show you what the game is like. Alright, so I'm just going to go over setup quickly and then we'll get started. So, um, the theme is, obviously, as I said, where are the, the Axis powers are coming over the hill. We've got all of them in column formation over here. And the only bump in the road is us, the MK3 landship. Uh, we have three parts to our tank. We've got the cannon, we've got the, the landship hull, and the sponsons. I should actually swap those around, but we also have a one-time commander, a one-use commander. I'm, there's a couple in the box, but I'm going to go with Fundamielin, and he has an ability called Miracle Shot. So anytime I roll triples, or well, one time when I roll triples on my dice, I can do three additional damage to any one front enemy unit, which could be really game-changing, or not, could not come into play at all. <laughs> okay, uh, the, the enemy... If for a solo game are divided as nine cards and they're divided into a grid of three by three like that where the front three are visible the back three we don't know yet and the reason why we don't know yet is because there are obviously more cards in the box and they could be different things they could be uh, infantry artillery they could be traps like minefields and um, barbed wire fences things like that <clears throat> but in this game I've got you can you normally have about five to six landships. I think I've got six landships in here, and then the th other three are variant other things. So that's the setup. Uh, as you can see, we're using these little red dice as wound markers. So, for example, that infantry has three wounds. I've got a three dice there for that. And then we have some dice to roll. I'm going to be rolling them in the base box, and we're all set to go. So first thing you do at the beginning of your turn is you take three dice, one for each part of your tank. And you roll them into the box, so and then you allocate them to your sections. So, just to show you, for example, the cannon over here, uh, the numbers represent what sort of uh, action you can do. So, one is an armor-piercing shell, two is an armor-piercing shell, three is a high high explosive shell, four is a high explosive shell, five is a jam where you get no action, and six you can repair cannon. So, for example, in this situation, I'm fully healed, so clearly I'm not going to add the 6 to that. Because there's no, you can't repair above your starting health. So, the 6 won't go there. The 6 does no action on this one. And a 6 does a quick repair on that one. So, clearly I'm not going to be using that 6. The 6 is not a great role for me at this point. Uh, but 3 and 4 could be useful. 3 on the cannon is a high explosive shell. 3 is a machine gun, um, not bad, and 3 is attack left front enemy, so this is the left front enemy, which is the mink class landship, it has 4 wounds, the infantry is 3, and the boar class landship is 6, so obviously I win when I clear out the enemy, 
they win when they destroy either my cannon or my hull. If they destroy the, mons the sponsons, I am still in the game, but we go down to the final battle where no more healing can be done, or repairing in this case. Alright, so I think I'm probably going to go with a 6 on this one, um, just because... I think three and four over here, uh, in fact four is stuck in the mud over here, so that would mean high explosive shell on this one, which is one damage to any frontline enemy unit. So I probably want to try and focus on one thing at a time. So I'm probably going to focus on their mink. It's got the least amount of wounds, and because when you, as you'll see when I get to their turn, um, theirs is uh, placed from smallest to, from left to right, and then from lowest to highest. So... Sixes is a miss on this one. He's unlikely to get that, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick on him. Which means, in that case, uh, attack center front enemy is a three. Attack left enemy, so left enemy is there, and then high explosive shell is there. So that's what I'm gonna do. So then I, I've allocated my dice, and now I will, you know, activate them. So four is a high explosive shell. One damage to any frontline enemy unit. I'm going to target the mink. So it puts him down to three, and that gets removed. A six is overheated barrels, no action, so no problem. Three is attack left front enemy. Two damage to infantry or artillery, or one to a land ship. This is a land ship, so I take one more damage on it. Not a bad start. I've taken two damage on the mink. So two more, and I've killed my first land ship. But that's my turn done. I didn't roll triples, obviously. So it goes over to them. As I was saying, they get allocated from left to right, from lowest to highest. So, a 1, <laughs> isn't that funny? So, a 1 on the mink is swap with card to the right. What that means is, I'm just going to lift that up. That moves into the center now, which means it changes a little bit what it will do, because obviously the higher numbers activate different things. Let me just go back to this one. A five is a glancing hit. One damage to sponsons or shock troops. So these are my sponsons right here. As I said before, I'm using the MK3 bits over here. But you could use different things. I mean, I have, for example, I could have used the hull for the MK2 or the shock troops. Or I could have used the cannon MK2. I've just gone for the MK3 altogether. So this is going to go down to three. If I lose my sponsons, I'm not dead. But it's not good either, because I also roll one less dice. And then the ball is a six, one damage to the cannon. Okay, so that's not great. But I'm still good, I'm ready to go. Now it goes back to me. Let's see what I get. One, four, and a five. All right, well, one on the cannon is one damage to any frontline land flagship, land ship, uh, which means I can still target the mink. That's pretty good. One is machine gun barrage, two damage to any frontline infantry or artillery. We do have frontline infantry, and they can be quite annoying. So that's not bad either. Two damage will take them down to just one health. And then a one there is jam, no action. So provisionally, I'm putting the one over there, which means I'm left with a four and a five. So a four and a five over here is on the sponsons is attack center front enemy, and attack right front enemy, or attack center enemy could be there, which is the mink, which is good. And then five, oh, five over there is no action, so that's no good. So one damage to any frontline enemy, and that means this one will be attack right front enemy. So I'll be pinging off a point of the ball. So I'm not actually killing anything like this, but I am severely wounding things. This might be a mistake, but I'm going to go with this. So the cannon is number four, one damage to any frontline enemy unit. I'm going to target the mink putting it down to one damage. And then the hull is machine gun barrage. Two damage to any frontline infantry or artillery. So this is a frontline infantry, two damage, puts it down to one. So that's pretty good. And then the sponsons, uh, which is number five, attack right front enemy. Two damage to infantry or artillery, one to a land ship. This is a land ship, so it takes one damage. And that's my turn done. Over to the Axis powers, and they've got a 1, a 2, and a 3. Alright, so a 1 on the infantry is a miss. Beautiful. A 2 is a glancing hit. 
1 damage to Sponsons or Shock Troops. So my Sponsons takes another hit. I need to start thinking about healing soon. And 3 critical damage, 1 damage to Hull. That's pretty bad as well. Okay, so it goes back over to me. Just before I start, I have an option of removing dice. So obviously I have 3 dice because I have 3 sections of my tank. I could remove, say for example, 2 dice and repair two of the hits that are and only roll one dice and repair damage or I could roll two dice and take one and just repair over there uh, but obviously they have repair options themselves so and if I take dice out I'm definitely not gonna get Van der Mulen's ability so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna forego that and I'm just gonna go with rolling dice and hoping for the best oh I didn't get it but I've got a one and two threes so threes all across the board is just damage one damage to any frontline enemy, one damage to any frontline infantry or artillery, one damage to um, left front enemy. So, I think the machine gun might take out the infantry. So, one damage to any frontline infantry or artillery. Because jam, oh, that's not the right one. A three over there. A one over there is armor piercing shell, which is to any frontline land ship. That could be useful, could take out the mink with that. A one over there is no action. So, like that. Attack center front enemy. Yeah. Okay, fine. So I'm going to go like that. There's no healing, which is scary. I could be pushing my luck a bit, yeah. So I can activate them in any order. I don't have to activate them from left to right like I do the enemy ones. So I think um, the machine gun, this one on a three is machine gun. One damage to any frontline infantry or artillery. I've got to use that on there. So the infantry has been killed. That is removed from the game. And then a new ship, in this case, will pull down, and it is a stag. So I'll put that like that. And then, so I've done, which was that one. This one has to go on the tack left front enemy, which is the newly arrived stag ship. So that's going to go down to one, or to four rather. And then my armor-piercing shell, which is one damage to any frontline land ship. So I could target the stag, or I could target the boar, uh, or obviously the mink. I think I'm clearly going to go for the mink yet, just to kill it. Um, but I mean, it doesn't really make a difference because they'll probably refill with another one. But whenever you kill two um, land ships, you get to take an advancement card. You draw two, choose one, discard the other from the game. So in this case, I'm going to do that. So I'm just going to put that there to remind me. And the mink is dead, and a new one will replace it. And it is indeed another land ship, which is the wildcat. And it's a big one. All right, so now I've got three land ships on the front line, and I've taken a bit of damage as well. I need to be wary of that. Let's see what they do. So they've got one, a three, and a four. A one is a miss. Beautiful. A three is retreat and repair. Swap back one card and reduce damage by one. Okay. So in this situation, it doesn't. It can't actually reduce damage anymore. <laughs> That's quite amusing. So the wildcat just saw the ta the tank in front of it blow up and thought, "Uh, uh, I've had enough of that," and moves out the way. So he goes back and is replaced by the artillery, the medium artillery. And then four, critical hit, one damage to the hull. Oh dear. The hull goes down to three. So, I've played this game before, by the way. Three is, is not a good number to be on, because I've had where every single one targets the same one, and goes from three to zero, and that is the end of me. But, as usual, I like to push my luck, and I'm not going to... The thing is, if I get triple, I can take out, I could basically take out one of these, uh, like the stag, in one hit. Three damage from Van der Meulen, and then one from my cannon will blow it up. That's why I'm pushing my luck. Ugh, oh, I didn't get it again. Sixes, remember it was not that great on the first turn, but it could be a little more useful now. Alright, so sixes is quick fix, repair sponsons, plus one. So you can repair this up to three. Over the barrels, so it's definitely not going there. And repair cannons. So I can repair the cannon. It's only taking one damage, but the repair cannon option is plus two. Or you could do plus one sponsons to hull. I'll probably do the hull. So I'm going to do the hull there. I'm going to repair my sponsons over there, which means 
the whole... Oh, that's interesting. So I'm not going to do any damage this turn. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. I'll, I'll basically, I like to do damage every turn. And this is not normally what I like to do, but this is just repairing the sponsons. This is going to repair either the cannon or the hull. Um, and then this one is hunker down, which is no damage to hull next turn. So they can't target the hull, which is good. Uh, but I could, for example, do an armor-piercing shell on him, which is one damage to any frontline airship, and then put the six over there, which is overheated barrels, which is no action. But that seems folly, so I'm just going to go with this. So this is going to keep this here to remind me. This is just repairing my sponsons by one. There's no choice about that, and it's not a bad thing either. And this one, I can repair my cannons, which is only by one point, or I can repair my hull by one point. Considering the hull is not going to take any damage next turn, I feel like, even though it's inefficient, I feel like I should repair my cannon. Because, like I said, I could potentially die if everything targets a cannon. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to heal my cannon up to fully functional. That could be a mistake, and you guys can comment down below and say what a fool I was there. But that's what I'm doing. Right, let's see what the axis are going to do. Ooh, some high numbers here. So three, five, and five. A three is one damage to the cannon. See? See? Uh, and then five. Splotters. Spotters. If infantry on front line, two damage to hull. Otherwise, one damage. So it doesn't matter. There's no infantry, so it'd only be one damage, but the hull can't take damage this turn. So that's effectively a miss. And then five, retreat and repair. So swap one card and reduce damage by one. Okay, so same thing happens again. This will come out. This moves back and it repairs back up to six. And we have a new land ship in the front, the Badger. And that is like that now. Okay. So the hull did save its point. Cannon took one. I'm down to triple three on all my things. And the land ships are swarming me on mass. This could be bad. I'm going for three again. Come on, triple. No. Nope. One, two, five. There are other um, commanders, by the way. Um, I've I've chosen Fundamillion, but I could have chosen Hansen or Waldrum, and they different th do different things. This one can repair any one player unit by plus three, and this one's plus one all player units. Okay, um, let's see. So, one is no action on there, so I'm probably not going to use the one there. One year is machine gun damage, uh, two damage to any frontline infantry or artillery. There's artillery there. So, one is looking likely to go there. And then, uh, two is armor piercing shell, or repair sponsons plus two, or plus one cannon to a hull. And then, five is no action. So, five over this side. Yeah, fine. Let's go like that. Maximum damage. Right, two. Armor piston shell, one damage to any frontline land ship. Who do I want to pick on? This is going to target um, the infantry artillery in the middle, yeah? And this one is going to target the right front enemy, which is the badger over there. So, might as well do this one first. Attack right front enemy for two damage to infantry artillery or one to a land ship. So, that is a land ship going down to four. This haggis has to target... The machine gun or artillery or infantry or artillery does a two damage though and then a two on this is one damage to any frontline land ship so i feel like the badger took a hit i might as well give the badger some more good good news putting it down to three all right let's see what we got a one and a dull six so one is a miss which is good Ugh. Right, so a one is a miss. A six, if infantry on front line, two damage to hull, otherwise one damage. There is no infantry. Uh, artillery doesn't count because it's obviously the artillery itself. But that means one damage to the hull, and then a critical hit, one damage to the hull. Oh my god, squeaky bum time. <sighs> my hull is down to one. If it takes one more damage, I'm dead. So you feel like, I feel like I really should remove some dice just to heal it but if I roll five I can repair hull by two points and of course if I roll triple five I can repair the hull by two points and use for me lens three oh what's the chance of me rolling triple five screw it I'm going for it 
Listen, when you're watching this video, don't use me as the tactical strategic master. You're just looking to watch how to play the game. Well, I got a five, but I didn't get a triple five. So five's clearly going to go there. I don't care what the others do. I got to repair that hull. A one is no action, and a one is one damage to any frontline ship. And this one's also a repair. So, yeah, that actually worked out. So, five is repair hull plus two, or sponsons a cannon plus one. I'm going to go with repair hull for two, bringing it up to three. This one is repair sponsons for two. It can only go up by one, so I'm not going to do that. And then I can do one to the cannon or one to the hull. Um, I'm going to do one to the cannon, just because I can do another two there, but I can only do one there. So, and then one is armor piercing shell, one damage to any frontline land ship. There you go, Badger. Take another hit. All right. Over to the access. I got a one, which is a miss. A one, which is a miss. And a six, one damage to the hull. Huh. Okay. I suppose I could take that, considering the other two were misses. One damage to the hull. Boom. My turn. Come on. Triple five. Oh, I didn't even get any fives. All right. Um, I think it's time to take out the artillery. And then fours is high explosive shell and attack center front enemy. Yes, this is pretty good. So let's start with a machine gun barrage. Two damage to any frontline infantry or artillery. Artillery takes two damage and he's dead. Boom. The wildcat comes back into place. Right, that's good. I like that. Then we'll do this one next because it's specific where it's going to target. Attack center front enemy. Attack center front enemy, which is the wildcat. Uh, for one damage. Boom. Unfortunately, if I'd rolled a five, I could have targeted there and killed that. Um, and then the cannon is a number four. One damage to any frontline enemy unit. It's going to be the badger again. Down to its final point. One more damage to the badger, and then I can get a cow's card, which is also another one shot ability, uh, which could be very useful. But first, they take their turn. A one is a miss. A two is reduced damage by one. And three is re <laughs> retreat and repair. Oh, come on. Okay, well, a one is a miss. Two is reduced damage by one. I'm just going to leave that there to remind me. Basically similar to the whole thing. And then this one is retreat and repair. Swap back one card and reduce damage by one. God damn it. So it goes back up to two. And the boar, which is on full health, is going to come back into the front line. Now, um, I was saying earlier, when the sponsons on my tank die, we go into the final sort of phase battle. The same can happen when uh, the Axis cards are down to three cards irrespective of what they are so it could be a land ship could be artillery could be infantry once they're down to three this is the final battle and they can't repair and retreat anymore either or reduce uh, heal and neither and neither can i um but uh, obviously if there's only three or four cards left and they do the retreat and repair and can't then let's just they skip that phase right so i'm gonna leave that there just to remind me that the wildcat is reducing damage by one this turn and i Come on, it's so close. Well, they're all land ships in the front, so machine gun barrage is no good. So, and the no action is no good, so the cannon's got to take that. Hunker down, I can live with that. Even though I'm not healing it, it's not going to take any damage next turn. Oh, and this one could heal it. Which is repair sponsons plus two, or cannon and hull plus one. Yeah, okay. So, this is going to remind me to stay there. This is going to repair this by one. And this is going to one damage to any frontline land ship. God damn it. So, it's going to be this one, I think. Oh, should I just pile on the ball? Because then it'll bring the badger back out again. And the badger is reasonably close to death, even though it's healed up. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to hit this for one all right well, that's my turn done so this gets removed as i didn't target it 
and a one is a miss a three is a retreat and a six is one damage to the cannon so a one is a miss a three is retreat and repair swap one card and reduce damage by one okay so now because it's got nothing behind but there's one over there and one over there i can choose i might as well just take this one so this is going back into the front line healing up to six again so annoying and we have another badger so i can now obviously see almost everything that's happening and a six is one damage to the cannon cannons was fully healed so that's not too bad okay nothing targeted the hole unfortunately my turn Ooh, i rolled it missed but a two three and a four ah okay so i can repair sponsons or cannon a hole there again i can hunker down here i can armor piercing shell over there i can't kill anything this turn i don't think yeah, in fact i can't so definitely not going to use a 3 on this, because there's machine gun damage, there's no infantry in the front line. 3 is a high explosive shell, or attack left front enemy, which is the stag. I was trying to go for the boar, and I can either do left or center with the sponsons, or repair. What I want to do as much damage as I can, but, but the land, the hull can only do hunker down this turn. Machine gun or stuck in the mud. So I feel like that's the best option there. Which leaves this one for that and this one for that. Right, so again, that'll just hunker down. This one can only attack left front enemy, which is the stag on the left here, taking one damage. And then the high explosive shell, one damage to any frontline enemy unit. So I could hit the stag again to put it down to two. I feel like, I know I said I wanted to go for the board to bring the other badger back into play, which I had knocked over, annoyingly. But now, I feel like, no, I'm changing plan again. I'm going to go with this. There you go. Because if I kill that, I can get a Chaos card. And I think that's very important. And though the one is always miss on that, so that's a, a strategic element there. I've got to think, like, if I kill this, something else might replace it that doesn't miss on a one. But at the same time, I've got to kill them all eventually. Okay, so a one is a miss. A four is one damage to the cannon. Putting me down to two. And then a six is one damage to the cannon. Putting me down to one. Oh, goodness me. So no damage to the hull. Because they didn't target it. And they couldn't have taken it. Oh, it's so close. All right, what have I got? Um, ones and twos, one no action. Machine gun damage, armor piercing shell. Hunker down, repair sponsons of cannons. I feel like that's got to go there. That has got to go there, which means it leaves me with a one there. And there's no infantry artillery in the front line. But, even if I swap them around and put a 1 this side, 1 is no action anyway. So I think that's probably the better option. Okay, so a 1 is 2 damage to any frontline infantry artillery. There isn't any, so that's nothing. 2 here is repair sponsons plus 2, or cannon or hull 1. I'm going to repair the cannon for 1. And then this is an armor piercing shell, 1 damage to any frontline landship. It's going to be the stag. He's down to one. All right, let's see what they got. See, one again. I really shouldn't shoot that anymore. It's just a one. Every time I roll a one for that, it's a miss. I do I leave it on one. That's, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, a one is a miss. One damage to the hull. And this one is one damage to the hull. Oh my goodness. I'm in so much trouble. But... As you may have told tell by now, I'm not going to repair. I'm just going to go for it. Triple! Oh, damn it. It's so close again. But I think it fives. Fives, I remember, being a good thing, wasn't it? Repair hole for two. Yes. Uh, five there is a no action. And then attack front right enemy. And six is repair cannon. Yes. 
So that wasn't a terrible roll. So repair cannon by two. Yeah, baby. Repair hull by two. Yeah. And then this one is attack right front enemy, which is the boar over there. Two if it's a damage. If it's infantry artillery, it is not. So just one point of damage. Okay, that, that roll might have actually saved my butt. Let's see what they do. See, one again. I need to leave that there. I can't afford to move that. That's a miss as well. Wow, that was a good turn. One is a miss. Two is a miss. Three is a critical hit. One damage to the hull. There we go. That That has now confirmed my idea that I'm going to target the ball this time. As much as possible. One, two, three. Three, attack left front enemy. No, I don't want to do that. Machine gun, one damage to any frontline infantry or high explosive shell, one damage to any frontline enemy unit. So I think three should go there. But then that leaves me with one and two on these two, which means, well, three would have been one damage to any infantry or artillery, and one is the same, but just two damage. So either way, that's nothing. That leaves me with a two there to hunger down, but then that leaves me with a one there, which is no action. A two there is at least re I can repair the sponsons or the cannon or hull, so I'm going to go this way around. So, a one is machine gun barrage, which is actually pretty good, but there's no infantry or artillery in play, so that's nothing. Uh, number two over there is repair sponsons. I could repair the sponsons by one point, but I'm not going to. Instead, I'm going to repair my hull for one point. That seems sensible. And then the cannon is armor piercing, no, uh, high explosive shell, one damage to any frontline enemy unit, which will be this bad boy. Bring him down to three. Okay. One, C, C. Good choice. Right, one is a miss. Three, one damage to the hull. Oh. And a four is one damage to the hull. Oh. They're getting a bead on me now. My turn. Yes, you guessed it. I am not going to repair. I got one, one, six. Oh, ones are not great. I think this might have messed me up. So i got to go there. See, one um, is machine gun barrage and jam, so there's no actions there. But the six at least repairs my hull by one point. Whereas if I put the six there, it's no action. Or repair sponsons, which I can do for one. But I don't care about the sponsons at this point. I need to repair the hull. One more damage to the hull, and I'm toast. But then that does mean that I'm left with a no action and a no action. Do I push my luck? Because I could... <laughs> yes, you know what? No... What do they call it? Um, you got to be brave. So it was I thinking something like this. Yeah, okay. I'm going to go like this. This is obviously a mistake. But I'm pushing my luck here just to see if I can pull off a miracle. So nothing. One damage to any frontline land ship. You guessed it. I'm targeting the boar. Putting him down to two. This is it. Any damage to the hull, and I'm dead. One is a miss. Beauty. And then fives. Oh dear. No, it didn't work. Right, well, one is a miss. Five. One damage to the hull. And this one, just for interest sake, is retreat and repair. <laughs> so, my whole plan on the right there is falling apart. But it doesn't matter, because... The sucker has targeted the hull, which means I go, I blow up, and because it's the hull, obviously my tank is no longer operational, and I have lost. And there you go. Clearly, I was just showing you how to play, not tactical str strategic depth, um, as I should have repaired on that turn, but I, even if I'd done the original thing, I would have still had one point left. So, that was probably a mistake, but I like to push my luck. 
I, I feel like sometimes you have to push your luck with this because it's pretty tough. Right, so let's talk about the two-player option, which is something they've added to the game. The two-player option is basically very similar in gameplay, in fact, almost identical, except you have a grid of access cards of 12, so 4x4, four by, uh, four by four? Um, and you have two tanks, but you only have two dice per player. The difference is you can then choose, so for example, on my turn, I roll my two dice, and I can add, say, a four to there, but then I could add a six to your tank, um, giving you three actions on your turn and you could do the same I mean if you're going to do the same on your turn then we might as well just keep our dice although it depends on what you roll I suppose um, so it's um, the, the 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 access powers have four dice on their turn and you still have the same victory conditions you need to clear everything out and if one of your tanks die the other one retreats and that is a full play of pocket landship uh, this is on Kickstarter right now, so you can follow the link below. Uh, Wordforge Games are doing a fantastic job um, with all the games they're producing. They've done D-Day Dice recently, which will be delivering hopefully soon to backers. And they've also done the excellent Devil's Run. And they've got a lot a growing catalogue of games in their collection. And this is just going to be another fantastic game to add to their repertoire. So thanks for watching. I hope you guys liked that. And uh, if you did, like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys later.